Hi, this is Terry, and welcome back to today's tutorial workshop, which is going to be about this imported Celtus chinensis, or hackberry as it's commonly known. It's a very popular tree species uh, grown in South Africa, but um, in quite a lot of parts of the world as well, Australia, I believe. It used to be very, very fashionable or very much uh, grown in Japan as well. So what I want to focus on today is um, the styling of this tree and the kind of decisions that go through my mind when I am working on a material like this that uh, I've never worked on before. In other words, something that has perhaps been styled. Um, it was the tree was purchased. I purchased this on behalf of a customer in Taiwan and it was imported fairly recently, uh, but I've never worked on it. Obviously it's been worked on by uh, a grower or potentially a bonsai artist, I'm not sure. I am the one who has now uh, been largely tasked to take the tree further. I now need to go through the tree and explore it, get to know it better, and understand where I want to take it or sort of clarify on that idea, um, that future vision of the tree, and then what does not fit uh, with that vision and remove those, uh, those branches. But also just about checking the structure of the, uh, the, the tree and eliminating potential uh, problems, and then obviously setting the structure by means of wire, the branches in the position that I would like them to grow. Uh, last week, I sat down for a few hours. Um, I've started on the lower portions of the tree, the lower branches, because that is the uh, preferred, uh, my preferred approach to working on a tree, the lower branches first, especially your first branch, because that sets the the tone, the rhythm, the appearance of what the other branches will look like. So you, you, you're taking your primary branch, uh, which often will dictate what style um, the tree is being styled in, and then developing uh, once that is defined. So that will often take you the longest uh, of all the branches to work on. And, uh, and then all the branches follow on that. So nothing would exceed usually, I can't think of an exception, but there probably is one. The probably uh, the, the, the first branch, nothing would exceed uh, that in the silhouette or in the profile of the tree. So then all of your subsequent branches leading up into the apex would obviously need to fit into that, uh, whether it's a, um, a candle a flame a type shape, a triangular shape, or a very rounded triangular shape, which coincidentally is how branches on a tree would grow because lower branches that are much shorter than branches above them would simply die because they don't have sufficient light. So it's not about bonsai convention, it's just about how trees would physiologically grow uh, or occur in, in nature without interference from, from man. So we need to, that's why I start at the bottom of the tree, moving up to the apex, and so today uh, you're going to pick off, uh, pick up uh, from where I left off last week um, and I'm going to continue with the styling of the tree and hopefully we'll complete it during today's uh, session. First thing that I'd like to show you is a completed uh, wiring of a branch. What I very often see are branches that are emerging from the main branch uh, at a 90 degree angle or at a very, very large angle. You need to try and get uh, these angles to be quite close to, uh, you know, to a sort of a 30 degree uh, kind of angle uh, or so. It needs to be quite gentle. If you look at, do yourself a favor and go and take a look at trees that are growing out in your garden or somewhere in the neighborhood, and you'll see that all the branches, uh, when they fork, they, the, 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 the branch that forks off will do so in a very gentle fashion generally does not, or at least I cannot think of any examples of where branches are growing out at a 90 degree angle. So that's the first thing that's quite important. And you will see as I work through this tree, I will be changing those, that initial angle as the branch forks off. Second thing that I need to uh, mention to you is that obviously you need to add movement to the tree, to the branches from the top. Because when you view the tree, you're going to be viewing it from the front more or less at the, at the middle uh, of, of the tree. So you're either gonna crouch down or the tr tree is going to be elevated on some kind of a stand. So the branches not only need to have movement from the top uh, or when viewed from the top, but very importantly, it needs to have movement 
from the side or from the front view and I'll show you what I mean. So you'll see here with these branches they've been given some upward and downward movement so it's not just straight out. Uh, very often in books you'll see illustrations where the branch is given a sort of a snaking appearance uh, from the top uh, but and and then very often or it's very easy to forget that the branch needs to be given the same or similar treatment from the when viewed from the front. So you will obviously get branches emerging from the side uh, top of a primary branch um, or even a secondary branch and those will will be used to then wire onto the top so that you that uh, obviously spaced apart um, but so that you are able to build volume to the pad. Otherwise you sit with a like a pancake shape of a branch. You need to create foliage pads with volume uh, by overlaying uh, branches. Uh, so using uh, branches that are emerging from various portions on the structural branch and layering them uh, to give volume. So yeah, but you need to be careful when you're doing that to also make sure that the branches are not covering the branch below it. So you, what you're trying to do is you're going to have a branch um, in, a, in a position and then if viewed, um, when you're viewing the pad from the top and you have another branch um, situated above it, it should be either to the left or to the right of it, but not directly over a branch. You can see that I've d completed the styling of these lower branches and now I'm moving up into this area here. So this tree is uh, split up into sort of three or four main trunks and uh, so each of them are treated individually but yet are part of the, um, the whole so they need to be viewed as a whole uh, but you're styling each individual um, section or part or unit so when you're styling as I mentioned you start from the bottom and you work to the top and then what I also like to do is um, so that I don't waste uh, wire uh, uh, or uh, is I would go through the tree or that's that portion branch by branch and eliminate the branches or growth that I know I'm not going to need so that I only wire what I'm actually going to be keeping. Something else that I think is extremely important to mention is the branch placement. Where does your branches grow, uh, go? I would basically look at the tree, the, the, the main trunk, the center of the main trunk as my point of origin, if you like the center point of the circle. So any branches that I'm styling need to radiate, if I imagine that as my point, the, the center, that I'm drawing lines to the outline of the tree. If you were to view the tree perfectly from the top, you see it as a circle, and then I would style these branches, wire them into position so that they're all moving, that they're radiating out from the center uh, of, of the tree. And in this way, you'll get a uh, very nice, it, it, it looks very nice, it looks very organized, but it also makes sense because branches are always going to grow to where they can receive sunlight. And uh, they will do so in the shortest possible manner or with the least amount of effort that they need to do. So that's gonna be, let's say, um, a in that old saying, uh, as straight as, straight as the, the crow flies or as the crow flies. So they will do that in, in, in a sh um, pretty much in a straight, uh, generally straight direction. So obviously there would be movement and that gives you the interest, uh, but it's gonna move in a generally straight line out to the, the, the circumference. And that is how you're going to treat each of the pads, but not only the pads, you're going to look at that um, in an overall perspective or view of the tree as well. You will notice that this tree does have some evidence of wire bite. Now, fortunately, this is at the back of the tree, so it's not too much, problem, uh, too much of a problem um, because it will be hidden most of the time. Uh, but if the tree is exhibited, uh, in which case it would usually be defoliated, uh, you may see this. This kind of um, flaw, styling flaw, if you like, um, with deciduous trees is obviously not desirable uh, because uh, you don't want to see, it breaks the illusion um, of it being a natural tree or in miniature. Um, so you can essentially see man's intervention. So that's the problem with wire bite. Um, however, this tree is still uh, quite a ways away from 
being finished, uh, if there is such a thing with bonsai, but uh, certainly being uh, quite far away from being a refined tree. And so we will have, uh, over the next number of years, we will have a, a considerable amount of sap flowing through this area, and this is likely to soften. What you could do, and I have seen it done, although I haven't really used the technique myself because I don't find it entirely necessary, but if you really want to, or if the um, wire bite is extreme, what you can do is take a blade and uh, cut through the, or just uh, yeah, remove the pinnacle or the peak or the crest of the wire bite and seal it. And then that will uh, heal over. And when it does, it'll obviously be smoother. But I think that uh, given that this tree is a ways away from being refined, um, this will soften with age and um, it's still a young branch, it's not an old branch. And, and so I think that that is, uh, it will not be too much, or it won't be a problem in the future. I'd like to mention the timing of this work. Uh, so a lot of people will ask me, when is the best time to, to do such and such? There's, uh, there's two answers to that. There is the best time uh, from a horticultural uh, perspective, uh, certain steps uh, are best done fairly specific times of the year. Um, so it's a very valid question um, and, and obviously understanding the species, uh, what your objectives are uh, and all that is important to determining um, the answer or having the answer to that question. The, the second uh, version of the answer, if you like, would be the best time for you. You would obviously have other demands on your time. There might be work commitments, family commitments. Uh, something that prevents you from uh, perhaps working on the tree at the optimal time. So the best time in that respect is the time, the best time being when you can actually work on the tree, when you have time to do it. So when you, if, if it's the latter, so obviously we would always try and uh, work uh, on our trees at the best optimal time for the tree from a horticultural perspective. Um, but there are times where perhaps that is not going to be possible. So you might be premature or early uh, to work on the tree, uh, or you might be a little bit late, um, but that is the time that you have available to work on it. And so that becomes the best time. So with this particular tree, tree was defoliated, has now uh, leafed out again, but the leaves have not hardened off fully. So normally when I would work on a deciduous tree, I would be defoliating the tree. This just makes it so much easier to be able to see into the structure of the tree, which helps me to determine where, uh, which lines to work with, which branches uh, to, to keep, and which branches to remove, um, you know, because the leaves would, would, would shield or hide um, a, a lot of that detail. However, in this particular instance, the, the leaves have not yet hardened off fully. And so therefore I don't feel comfortable uh, pruning them off again because that will weaken the tree. I would rather just leave it and uh, leave the leaves on. Um, and it is, and then obviously just work quite qu carefully when uh, applying the wire uh, that I do so without or wiring leaves onto branches. So I'm just gonna give you a uh, once around of the tree. So this is uh, where I stopped last week uh, with uh, styling it. Uh, just to give you an idea of uh, where, where I'm at uh, already. And you can already see the direction in which I'm taking the tree, uh, the kind of branch angles that I'm using, um, as well as the curves in the branches. So it tends to be a little bit more gentle and uh, sweeping uh, motions rather than very uh, ang large angular changes. So this is a tone, if you like, that I'm set, setting or have set for the tree. And now I need to continue to uh, uh, emulate or echo that um, throughout the tree. Last week, I think I ended off uh, with this having just been pruned, uh, cleaned up. And uh, so I'm going to finish this back section of the tree or this back trunk. I'm going to finish wiring that, seeing as it has already been prepared. Uh, and then I will move on to the next portion of the tree. So as always, you want to use as little wire as possible. Um, uh, it's, it's not nice if you see trees that have got a, a huge amount of wire covering the branches. So you want to use the appropriate thickness and um, of wire and I'm using aluminium wire. I uh, prefer using aluminium uh, on deciduous trees, particularly those that have got 
a thinner uh, bark um, because uh, copper tends to, to um, damage the bark a lot easier than aluminum wire does. But if you do need to use copper, what you can then do is uh, just cover the branches that you're needing to wire with uh, some raffia. Uh, and then that will also serve to protect, um, to protect them. I'd like to show you a little tip, uh, trick, whatever you like. This branch is now laying above this branch. Um, so there is a nice fork in it already. And uh, no, under normal circumstances, this branch would have to be eliminated. One, because it's above the, the, the branch below it. And also because this branch is heavier than this one. So it's likely that the tree, as you can see, this branch is weaker than this one. And if I was to wire it in this position uh, that it's currently in, this branch will just become stronger and this branch will become weaker and eventually I'd have to prune it off, uh, which means that I'm going backwards in terms of ramification. But if you apply wire and when you do so, you do it in a direction that allows you to then twist the branch and lay it flat like this, Now we can wire, we can twist this branch around. And we have the branch in a much more usable position. When you're planning on doing something like that, you need to wire in the direction that you're going to twist so that the wire tightens. You don't want it to wire in the opposite direction because when you twist it in, in the direction that I did, which was clockwise, um, the wire will loosen and then it will have less hold on that branch. So you'll end up having to overbend it or over twist it uh, to compensate and in so doing you might break that branch. So I've completed wiring the, the section of the tree and now I'm going to proceed to setting the branch structure which means positioning all the branches in the direction and angles that I want them to be in. This pad is now complete and this trunk actually is now complete as well. So as you can see, referring back to what I said earlier on, all the branches originate from an, a sort of an imaginary center point and radiate uh, outward um, in order to get sunlight. Curves have been placed in the top and in the well from the viewed from the top and from the side and uh, branches have been layered in a way to form a uh, vo volume to the foliage pads although we're not treating this as um, a, 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 in any way as individual foliage pads either so when you're uh, setting your pads and creating um, these these areas of foliage and branches uh, you can't forget the entire profile uh, or outline of the tree. So although you're working on a particular and individual branch, this branch needs to fit into a larger unit, um, namely this trunk. Um, so you're treating this as a, as a tree, if you like. Um, therefore, you must remember that nothing can grow into the tree. So branches that are growing out the reverse side, uh, it, 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 it wouldn't exist in nature because they wouldn't, they wouldn't develop because they wouldn't have had the, the sufficient sun. They would have been too weak and would have died. Uh, so you, you have to bear that in mind when you are uh, positioning your branches or deciding what you can keep and what you need to remove. So any branches have been removed uh, that were growing on the inside. Not only that, as I've mentioned on a few occasions already, the branches need to radiate from the center of the trunk out to the, to the profile of the tree. But then, they, then um, obviously the tree is going to have, and I say obvious because you will always find that a trees, um, that the lowest branches have are, are the longest. Um, that is also why they will, you will often find them drooping because they are so long and uh, the branch droops due to the weight of that branch. But needless to say, um, so these branches are now, this is the extent of the profile, the widest point of the profile, the, the two bottom areas. 
Uh, and this is also why I said earlier that you need to start styling the tree from the bottom and work to the top because this is the widest point and the top of the apex being the narrowest point, obviously. Uh, so everything needs to then, if, if depending now on whether you want uh, a sharp triangle or a very rounded triangle, and generally you'll find that Celtus are styled. Uh, I do model my approach to styling Celtus um, in the manner that the Taiwanese use. I think they are uh, the masters at this species. And if you haven't seen their work, do yourself a favor and look it up on Google because uh, it, it, the trees are just phenomenal. Anyway, so the trees generally have a very rounded shape, so it's not a sharp triangle. So this needs to have a very cloud-like feel. And I'm not talking about small little clouds, little tufts of foliage. I'm talking about a very sort of uh, um, voluminous kind of shapes. So this is going to have a very round shape. But as I've said, the, the, the outline of the tree needs to follow uh, so that um, it, it gradually gets narrower and narrower towards the apex. You can't have branches uh, at a certain point sticking out beyond that uh, because it's going, those branches are going to become progressively stronger and the bottom branches or the branches below that are going to become progressively weaker. So you're making life difficult for yourself. It's not that you can't do it um, or that it's wrong. It's just it's going to complicate things because you're forever going to be fighting that battle between the strong and the weak. Um, and as you will notice with this tree, the apex is now extremely heavy on the right hand side and quite uh, thin on this side. There has, it seems like there has been, some, for some reason, these branches became very weak and uh, they were pruned off. I don't know the history, but um, that's what's happened. So now we need, to, we need to work with what we've got and fix it, obviously. Uh, so I'm now going to have to thin uh, or cut this uh, apex back quite considerably on this side uh, in order to bring, to reel it in. And then after that, I can then wire uh, these branches and position them. Um, but it's pointless wiring everything only to cut it all back again. Uh, so, uh, and then, and, and, and also you could say, well, we want the, this area can be expanded. So the opposite to pruning this back would be to grow this on. Yes, you could, but I don't want the width of this tree's profile to be any larger than what it already is. Uh, so the only, the only way to go or the only place to go is to, is to prune this back. I'm not gonna go uh, very carefully with it because um, it's, gonna, it's just an unnecessary waste of time. So this is going to be shortened. I'm using a pair of scissors and essentially I'm just going to use them as a pair of shears, if you like, and I'm going to rough prune it back, bearing in mind this is a deciduous tree and so there will be dormant buds all along the branches and the tree can bud from that. Uh, you obviously can't do this uh, on a pine, but this isn't a pine, it's a celtus. But in this particular case, the, this technique is perfectly fine. Now it's also good to turn the tree around uh, so that you see it from the side. I think that's probably um, a pretty good side view for you. And then you'll also see that this needs to be pruned back. Now it's, it's very easy, uh, we're all subject to it, but uh, we develop a love for a particular branch and we hate to cut off the branch. <laughs> don't, be, uh, don't be too possessive over your branches. Uh, make those difficult choices now um, because if you keep them um, and then in a couple of years time you remove those branches um, or shorten them or whatever, you're basically just undoing all the work that you've done up until that point. And then you have to start again with the ramification. So make those uh, difficult uh, or tough decisions earlier on and uh, you can save yourself some time. Also just cleaning up the interior of the tree, these little shoots that come out, uh, any little dead branches that are in the structure, you can remove those. 
And then also you want to look out, as I said, this is the first styling for me on this tree. And so you wanna look out for areas where you've got multiple branches coming out at a single point. And then you need to decide if there's a reason why they should all remain, but ultimately they are going to start causing a reverse taper. And so if they're not serving a purpose, like for instance, helping to heal over a scar, uh, then they should be removed. You should only have two branches at every juncture. Also, when branches are too close to one another, you must imagine where the tree is going to be in so many years from now and, um, and think about how thick that branch is going to be at that point in time. And uh, whether the, if, the, if, so, if the branches are too close to one another, you're going to find that they will uh, effectively either fuse or look like they are fusing. Uh, so once again, you need to um, envisage what will happen in the future and then take the steps to ensure that you are to some degree future proofing the tree. I have finished roughly pruning the apex of the tree and now I will wire the branches and then position them and then there's a good chance that I'll also have to prune uh, those that are sticking out too far from the profile back a little bit more. As you're wiring, always start with the thickest wire and then move progressively to the thinner and always anchor your wire properly, otherwise it will either move and damage the bark or if uh, when you've wired and you now want to position the branch, uh, the branch won't stay in that position um, because it's not properly anchored because the wire is not properly anchored. It uh, takes uh, perhaps a little bit of time before you get used to uh, determining which gauge or which thickness of wire to use for different branches. Um, you don't want to use too thin a branch, uh, a, th a thinner wire, uh, because then the branch, you, you might bend it, and then in a few minutes uh, it will be back in the original position again. Alternatively, if you use too thick a wire, you will damage the branches as you're applying the wire. And also when it gets to the very thick, um, the very thick aluminum, it can be quite difficult to apply um, wire. So from around four millimeters, five, six sort of size. Um, so that takes a little bit of practice to, to apply that in a neat, uh, fashion generally when that wire is put on you'll often uh, you will often find um, that it is that there are fairly large gaps in the wire uh, between the wire and the branch uh, because it's difficult to get the wire to be flush against um, against the branch um, but if it's not flush if there are gaps between the wire and the branch then it's not going to hold the branch in position so rather in a case like that, if you can't get the, if, you, if you're inexperienced, you just can't for whatever reason get the wire to, to um, sit properly when you're using such, or when you need to use such thick gauges, then it might be better for you just to use uh, two, two thinner wires, uh, which are easier to apply. Um, and uh, that'll, that'll make, make it easier for you, um, as well as um, not damage the, the tree. Um, but you can still accomplish the, the bending that you wanted to. Sometimes you will need to wire or add a length of wire, a thinner piece of wire um, to continue with the wiring. Uh, then you need to put on about two coils uh, uh, where you've already got wire um, and then you step over to the thinner wire as I just did now on this wire because you don't want to use the same, don't be lazy, <laughs> and extend the same wire thickness all the way through to the finer branches, because all that's going to happen is you're going to break them off, and uh, you, you're going to kick yourself for being lazy. I've just finished wiring the apex, and so the next step will be to position the branches.
The apex can be quite challenging uh, when setting the branches because you need to remember where the sun is and obviously that branches are going to want to grow towards the sun. So as you move up into the apical area, your branches grow in a more upright fashion rather than in a very horizontal and even downward fashion uh, on the lower regions of the tree. So in the apex, you need to, from the front view, see uh, the angle, uh, if, you, if you see the tip of the trunk as being your center point, then you need to have this kind of fan-like shape. Um, and that not only needs to be visible from the front, but it also needs to be visible from the side. So you might have seen me uh, turning the tree so that I could see the tree on the sides and also make sure that my branches were arranged um, in that fashion. The apex is what finishes off the tree, uh, takes, sometimes takes, uh, it can take a fair amount of time uh, because while you're positioning those branches in, um, in the angles that they are required to be in, but also providing interest. And now in this case, there are some open areas in the tree, which in time we will fill. But of course, we want to uh, make the tree look as nice as possible every time we work on it. And, uh, and so, some of those, so some of the branches, the structural branches particularly, have been, have been um, splayed apart a little bit more um, in order to fill those, those gaps. But now secondary and tertiary branches can now develop from those structures. We can then fill the, the, the canopy. Thank you.